Ukrainians attacked a Russian Black Sea fleet with a swarm of marine drones, remote controlled boats, sea drones, uncrewed surface vessels. I don't know how to call them. You tell me. Supposedly, the flagship Admiral Makarov was hit and is damaged and out of action for some time. You could almost say it got knocked out cold. <laughs> Let's watch the footage together. There is an actual footage of the attack. I'm not talking about CCTV from the drones. At the time they made these kamikaze attacks. So here we have a point of view of one of these drones driving straight into the Russian vessel. And it's shaking violently because the waves are big and it's a small boat. For it to explode it needs to connect, drive straight into it. And I feel like this is going to happen here. It's aiming for the last time. And full throttle straight, straight into it. And boom, the feet cuts. There was an explosion. This is the next boat. Ooh, it's... This is a Russian vessel driving straight to it. I think it would have a better chance ramming it from the side. You better get away from... Holy hell! Okay, so the feed cut. If the feed cuts, we can assume it's an explosion or a destruction of the boat. It is not connecting to the hull right now, so I assume it lost feed or it was destroyed. Here we can see a CCTV footage that of the explosion. Boom, there it is. That's a big bang. Now that's a third boat. Yeah, I shouldn't call them boats, they're drones, sea drones. So apparently it's looking for a target. And is that a hull of the ship? Making a full circle. They seem to be very maneuverable, these drones. It's not really moving, it's searching for a target. <clears throat> This footage looks surreal to me, it looks like a computer game, but it's surreal that it's real life. <laughs> Where did Ukraine get these drones? That's the hull of the ship, alright. <clears throat> the feed was cut, it was speeding towards the hull of the ship, we can assume there was another explosion. So far we have videos of two what looks like to be detonations on hulls of big ships. Now this is the third one. The attack was done in two waves, one in the dark before it was light and this one when it was light a few hours later. Now the first wave alerted everybody. There were choppers in the air for the second wave and I think, see, you can, you can see these small explosions happening down there. I would assume this is a Russian vessel firing on these drones because if these drones were to detonate I think they would make a bigger boom. I would say these are the guns of the Russian ship. Okay, we have a can... Oh, the chopper is in the air, this is the second wave, they're trying to take down these torpedo boats with machine guns from the chopper and as we can see it's problematic to hit a moving target like that. Boom! This is incredible. They're trying to just shoot it to pieces. Which leaves me to wonder, the entire Black Sea fleet is in Sevastopol and they are relying on machine guns on a chopper. Russians should have all kinds of layered defense on that military port. The fact that these boats got through is... What? And as we can see from this video, even with a machine gun on a chopper hovering straight over this kamikaze boat, it's still difficult to take it down. It's driving straight to the vessel. Oh my god.
God, this is surreal. See, this, this bigger explosion here, I'm sure this was one of the guns from the ships aiming at this kamikaze boat. It missed. This being the second wave, I'm sure the entire Black Sea Fleet has been alerted and every gun is ready aiming at everything that moves. Holy fucking, that's... Oh, it tried to take it down, but missed narrowly. The last one was some kind of a smaller patrol boat, perhaps. Definitely not a high value target, but I guess they were trying to hit something. This entire footage is incredibly surreal, and the fact that they got into the harbor shows that Russian defenses are weak. Just weak. There's a lot of fog of war around this attack, and we'll be going into some details, but before, in this video, we actually have a sponsor. I'm not an Estonian soldier anymore. Or an Estonian YouTuber. I am now a Lord of Scotland. And these are my lands. Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom. Where landowners, such as myself, are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. They allow people to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland and an official certificate with a crest so that you can call yourself a lord or a lady. Bow before me, peasant. Off with your head. I'm supposed to be a nice lord. <clears throat> Off with your head. Your certificate features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. It makes a great last minute gift. They even have couple packs that come with adjoining plots of land. You could officially change your name to Lord or Lady and get it on your credit card, plane tickets, etc. if your country allows it. You can even get it on your dating profiles. I mean, have you seen some Lords up in Tinder? You're gonna be the first. Established Titles is committed to planting a tree with every order. It is a fun, novel way to help preserve the picturesque woodlands and biodiversity of Scotland while supporting global afforestation efforts. Established Titles is actually running a massive sale right now. Plus, if you use the code ESTONIAN69, yeah, I'm not kidding you, the code is ESTONIAN69, you get an additional 10% off. Established titles told me that the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot. Within a few minutes of walking, depending on how many of you want to become a lord or a lady, we can build our own little kingdom. Go to establishedtitles.com slash estonian69 to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Most sources right now say that Admiral Makarov, the flagship of the Black Fleet, was hit, is damaged and is out of the battle for some months, I mean knowing Russian repair speed, perhaps for a year. The last Black Ship was Moscow, that was turned into a submarine by Ukrainian forces and the new flagship was Admiral Makarov, which is under attack again. Russia really demonstrates their inability to defend their Black Sea fleet from Ukrainian attacks. Ukraine does not have a navy. Admiral Makarov was one of the main platforms to launch cruise missiles from Black Sea and Russia has done it several times. So taking this ship out of the battle saves Ukrainian lives directly. The Russian army official statement was that Russia destroyed all of the sea drones before they connected to the target and the only ship that was damaged was a minesweeper. But according to most Ukrainian sources up to three large vessels were damaged. Building ships and repairing ships is incredibly expensive and time consuming. Time will tell if Russia will divert resources to repair these ships fast enough to take part in this war again. It is very likely that these ships are out of the action for the remainder of this war. But what are these kamikaze boats? Some time ago, one of them beached in Sevastopol. We had this photo of the boat. Everybody was wondering what it is, what will it be used for? Well, now we know. The sea drone has impact fuses, so it needs to ram into the hull of a, of a ship 
to detonate. And as we can see from the footage, they were trying to do that. There's cameras on top of it with a night vision capability and a possible Starlink antenna. This is very much likely. How else are you gonna steer a small vessel like that up to 100 kilometers away with such clear camera link? The idea of these vessels is not new. The Houthi rebels have used them, Iran has used them, Italy actually has them in their navy. All of these are different prototypes, but the idea behind it is the same. Uncrewed surface vessel. And as we can see from this attack, they are very useful. But this is not the end of surreal videos today. We will watch a Russian retreat video from Kherson Oblast from their positions. This video really gives us an idea how the Russian army retreats. Organized or disorganized. In this video, Russians are really in a hurry from pulling back from one of their positions. They have some information that Ukrainians are going to shell the position or going to assault it. They are in a hurry and there is panic. As much as I understand, they're trying to gather all of the armor, all of the men, and as much equipment as they can to full throttle out of that position. They just throw the equipment right in into the vehicles. Possibly they will j jump on top of the vehicles and fill the vehicles with as much equipment as they can carry. Leaving so fast, you leave most of your equipment anyway. <laughs> We can assume this was a Ukrainian shell landing near them. They're running because they know this position will be shelled and it's here. It's happening now. They gotta get out of here. I think this explosion will trigger some panic. <laughs> You call this situation in Russia Bardak. This is full Bardak here. Though, so the driver started driving without waiting for all of the men to jump on top of the vehicle. So. Vanya ran back inside the bunker to bring something more. I guess he must have forgot his washing machine. Full throttle, out of here. BTRs have quite a high top speed and I'm guessing they're driving full top speed. This machine could not go any faster. And usually if you have uh, two squads on top of the BTR, you're not supposed to drive this fast. On road or off road, it's just not safe people will get hurt. The helmet flew off. Oh my God. Oh my God, he flew off the... Two squads of men flew off of the BTR at 70 kilometers per hour right now. Holy hell. I mean, if you fly off of a vehicle wearing, wearing heavy military gear at 70 kilometers per hour, there's not gonna be much left of your bones. This is another example of a Russian disorganized retreat, which is more like a panic or a rout. Ukrainian information operations have been very effective. If they make Russians panic, Russians destroy themselves, really. Ukrainians know this, so if they manage to convince the Russian troops in some positions that this position is going to be overrun or destroyed, 
Ukrainians don't need to do much. The Russian mind does the rest. Following the attacks to Sevastopol, Russia has blocked all access to Telegram across Russian Federation. Russian military bloggers had a huge following of Russian people from Russia. We're talking about millions of people. And after the Izium offensive for the Russians' Izium failures, these military bloggers have really blamed the Kremlin for these bad decisions. And I, I want to be clear here, these military bloggers are blaming the Kremlin, but they're not on the Ukrainian side. They're on the Russian side. They're pro-invasion but they think it's handled poorly and they blame the Kremlin. And people watch these military bloggers or read their posts and the Kremlin does not like that. The second step Kremlin has took against these military bloggers is just force mobilize them. Afghan commandos that were trained by the US Navy SEALs are being recruited into the Russian army by Wagner company. They're contacted by Wagner via WhatsApp. They are offered up to 3000 USD per month to fight in Ukraine. These troops have a really hard time in Afghanistan because they were trained by the US and when Taliban took over they had to go into hiding. So they have no future in Afghanistan. And this offer can be tempting. Even if Russia gets thousands of these troops, here's my take on it. In their case, it's much more about the motivation than training because Navy SEALs have one of the best training in the world and they train these commandos, but these commandos were not able to fight back Taliban who had nothing. So it's not about the gear, it's not about the training, it's about the motivation. And they didn't have the motivation to fight on their own soil in their own country. What motivation do they have to fight for Russia in Ukraine, especially keeping in mind that Russia is the country that invaded their home country in 1979. Soviet Union. Also, they do not speak the language. There will be a language bar barrier with everyone around them in Ukraine and they're not fit for the climate. Desert warfare is very different from warfare in Ukrainian Russian climate. I'm not saying these commandos cannot fight or they're not well trained. They probably are, but the language barrier and the climate difference, they are such big denominators that I don't think these troops can be an effective fighting force in Ukraine. I will end this video with a picture of Ukrainian losses. We don't talk about Ukrainian losses a lot, but I think it's time to talk about this subject. My friends, if you like what I do, then the Patreon link is in the description below, as well as the Knock em Out Cold merch. The first episode of the Estonian Soldier podcast is uploaded on the second channel. Link is in the description below. Talk to Jake Bro in that podcast was a lot of fun. Go and subscribe to the channel to be notified about future podcasts. Until my next video, my friends, Slava Ukraine.